Hi guys and welcome back to Simply Vajika, a place for budding and inspiring entrepreneurs, a place for people who hold leadership positions, it's also for people who want to start their own home care agencies. Guys, welcome back to another week. Today I want to talk about the topic of managing stress. Guys, this is not something that is news to you. A lot of us are really going through difficult times right now. And included in that is just managing stress, managing stress of our whole lives, being flipped upside down and changed over the last few months to really just understanding, you know, the new normal. How are we going to homeschool our kids? How are we going to continue performing at our job and balancing the needs of our families? On top of the already existing stressors that we had in our life previous to COVID-19. So right now to say that we're all going through stressful times is an understatement. But we don't have to sit back and take it guys. We could literally stand up under that stress and really turn that situation around so that we can be in control of our lives and really figure out how we can handle our emotions and really take back control over who we are as people and the lives that we lead. So guys, after doing a self inventory over my stress and my own emotions, I have come up with six tips to help you, to help me, to help us manage our stress. You guys ready? Let's get started. The first tip I have for you is to implement a exercise program. Some of us are better at this than others. There are people who have home gyms. I know there's plenty of videos online if you want to do cardio, if you want to do stretch, anything that you're trying to focus on or any method in which you want to do it, you can pretty much find online today. But there are some of us that we just don't have the energy or we don't want to spend our energy on an exercise program. So I also include and lumped into this one is make sure you're stretching. And the reason why I say that is because when you tense up, when you're stressed out, it really tightens your muscles. Not only does stretching help relax them, but almost immediately you feel a difference when you loosen up those muscles that tend to tighten up on us, our back, our neck. A lot of times that's where we carry a lot of our stress. So just by simply stretching, that can make a positive change in your life. Also, a recommendation that I have for you, for some of you that don't want to really kind of invest in a lot of exercise right now is go for a walk. Grab a friend, go for a walk. I have a friend that we have been walking twice a week. Uh, well, we started off with once a week, but now we're walking twice a week. For the past month, month and a half, it has made such a positive impact in my life. And so we really count on each other as accountability partners to make sure that we do go twice a week. But also not only while we're walking, we're talking, we're catching up on some things, but we're also really pushing ourselves to really get the most out of that walk. So literally guys, there's so many options out there. Find the one that works best for you and go for it. The second tip I have for you is deep breathing. Now, it's hard to take a pause when you're going through something, especially if there's an event that's highly time sensitive or you're being called to deliver on something now. Everything is now. Nothing can wait. What I would recommend you do in those high tense moments is just be present of your breath and slow down, even if it's just for five minutes, to deep breathe, to reset. During this time that you're deep breathing, this is when you can really start doing some positive talk, that you are capable, that you will get through this, that this is only temporary really start giving yourself those positive reinforcements that you need to get through the task at hand. The third tip I have for you is to eat well. Now guys, this comes more natural to, uh, to some people than others. Some people really will reach for that fruit, reach for those veggies and, instead of eating something that's processed, eating something that's full of carbs or high sugar. Now me, I, I'm looking for the sugar and so, <laughs> Um, but I also realized that when I have something heavy, I feel sluggish. I don't feel up to take care of the tasks that I need to. So remember, your body is going to perform based on the fuel you give it. And so um, while we all have our cheat days, while we all have our snacks that are hard to resist, 
be cognizant about what you're choosing to eat. Make sure you're drinking plenty of water. And if you prep your snacks and prep your meals, you'll increase the potential of you having a successful diet. At least a better one than you have today. The fourth tip that I have for you is take a break. Don't feel you always have to power through or push through an assignment. A lot of times if you just take a moment to back away, you find yourself really rested and assured and more confident in the task at hand. So make sure that you infuse uh, breaks into your schedule or mid task really kind of pull yourself away whether it's just to listen to a song say a quick prayer maybe have a conversation with someone who always just naturally lifts your spirits so that now you feel invigorated and ready to return back to the task at hand the fifth tip i have for you is a real big one guys and that's eliminate your triggers so you have to identify what's causing you stress is it your job your business your commute maybe it's your kids schoolwork so not always are we able to eliminate some of those things, but we certainly can reduce them. I do have a couple of tips to help you out with some of these things. As it relates to commuting, commuting, no one likes to commute, but it's always better if you can commute with somebody. Is there somebody that you trust that can share the load of driving? I will give you some tips on some of those Triggers that I mentioned, for instance, commuting for me used to be a big trigger. It used to be a big cause of stress for me. I was able to find a coworker that lived on the same end of town that I did. Between the two of us, we were able to put together a schedule in terms of every other day, who would drive and who would be in that passenger seat. By two of us being in the car, we were able to utilize carpool lanes, but in terms of toll rolls, literally my toll bill was cut in half. Sometimes it's really about resetting our perspective and resetting our attitudes. And if there are any critical conversations that need to be had, absolutely make sure you address those heads on. Figure out what's the best thing that you can do specific to your environment and specific to your employment. The last tip that I have on this, guys, is sometimes you just need to talk to someone. Now I will say someone because it really depends. Sometimes a close friend is all you need to kind of talk through the situation. A friend that will pray with you, a friend that will be realistic with you and kind of say, hey, here's some things that you can do to help or maybe here's some suggestions and how do you handle that situation. But good friends, close family members, those people are always um, good to talk to, to kind of help us out of ruts if we find ourselves um, it's kind of just stuck in a rut, not feeling good about ourselves. Um, the second piece of advice that I have there is sometimes it's necessary to seek professional help. For those of us who hold positions, um, our employer usually provides some type of employee assistance program, some kind of employee assistance program where you can have access to that professional, professional help. So that way you can talk to someone, someone who doesn't know you, someone who's non-judgmental, who could really help in, um, help you in understanding how you can better manage that stress. For those of us who do not have the benefit of working for an employer and we're really just working for ourselves, that doesn't reduce the importance. You still may need to invest in yourself by seeking help so that you can also understand how to better support yourself and get the help that you need. Sixth and final tip that I have for you is to find mood enhancers. This is my favorite topic for today because we all know there are certain things that really just lift our moods. For me, it's candles. I love surrounding myself with good smelling scents. Guys, it could be a nice cup of tea. It could be indulging in mindless entertainment. Um, you know, even though I don't watch a, as much TV as I used to nowadays, you know, maybe just getting that hour in of reality TV so that you can laugh, you know, <laughs> and not have to think about those stress points for an hour of your day. Um, but just kind of figuring out what some of those things are. It could be reading a good book reading a fashion magazine or an entertainment magazine. Some of those times to just drift off into some of those stories may help. It could be just taking some time off to spend time with your kids, with a loved one, with a spouse. 
you know, really do something that sets your soul on fire, something that invigorates you, something that will help you push that restart button so that you can get back to enjoying life again and really pushing that stress away. Sometimes it's listening to calming music. It's meditating, really turning within uh, to really bring about that calm and peace that we all desire. The last item I want to touch on, guys, is once you determine what some of those mood enhancers are or ways in which you could be a little bit more creative with your routine, make sure you stick to those things. So in other words, it's really not a one and done. It's not going to be like, hey, let me let me buy a candle and everything will be well. Um, you know, let me turn on some relaxing music and poof, I'll be I'll be perfect again. That's not what I'm suggesting. Any long time change, you know, takes time. It takes practice. Using myself as an example, um, I found out mid-March, so around spring break time, that after spring break, the kids would not be going back to school. And so at that time, I became a full-time instructor. Um, I still had my full-time job, still trying to run a full-time household. Um, still trying to stand up my own businesses that I'm trying to create and aspire to doing. Um, and so it became a little overwhelming. Um, again, like many of you know, that doesn't mean anything stopped. It doesn't mean anything got, got off my plate. However, I quickly knew that I had to do something so that I wouldn't become overwhelmed. And what I came up with was really just taking charge of my mornings. So that meant for me, I had to get up earlier than everyone else in the house in order to just have that quiet time to meditate, to read the Bible, to claim the day as my own, to do some stretching, a little bit of exercise. Now, initially, yes, I was tired because let's be honest, most of us would just want to have the extra sleep in our time, in our day. <laughs> but for me, I knew that the long-term impact would be a greater benefit than the extra hour of sleep and so i had to make that decision and guys i haven't looked back i have really just learned like if i don't do that routine my day is is off because i've gotten used to really setting the tone um, setting myself up for success for that day so again i use myself as an example but you will have to define and create what that looks like for you um, so I just wanted to throw that out there guys. It's a process, you know, you know, I wish I had instant gratification, instant improvement, uh, but some of these things do require time and require some effort on our part, but the benefit is so well worth it. So I just want to encourage you to really spend some time with yourself and find out what that means for you. So guys, if you've stuck around this far, please make sure you like the video. I do hope that you subscribe to my channel. You guys, thank you so much for your continued support. I will see you next week and stay blessed.